If you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask you to turn to the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 4, and we're going to begin reading in verse 13. Mark chapter 4, beginning in verse 13. The Bible says, And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how that, and, and, and how then will ye know all the parables? The sower soweth the word, and, though, and these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately, and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who, when they heard the word, immediately received it with gladness, and having no root in themselves, and so endure for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your word this morning. We thank you for each and every one that's here this morning. We, we pray that you would allow us to set our hearts on your word this morning, that you would give us uh, understanding, and that you would grant, grant us the Holy Ghost this morning, that we might understand and know your word more. And we pray these things in the sweet and the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Now, what we'll be preaching this morning is really uh, found in verse 17, and we'll, we'll work back to that way in a minute, but it's enduring. Uh, he, he says that these people that are kind of uh, uh, have no depth about them would never endure long. They would not last. Now, it ought to be uh, the desire of every believer this morning to endure and endure and endure, but how is that accomplished? How, how is that given to us as believers, this enduring faith and this enduring service that ought to last the entirety of our lives? Now, every one of us know that we've seen more the other way than we have those that endure and endure and endure until they're gone to be with the Lord. And that, that is what uh, the difference is. How do we endure? How are we the ones that are the lasting ones? How are we the ones that continue? Now, back in our text, we begin reading uh, in verse 13, and the Lord Jesus had given the parable of the sowers. And if you remember, he said, I speak in parables so they won't understand. Right. There were individuals he did not want to understand, right. not just the Jews, but the non-elect as well. Right. He did not want them to understand, but he did want his believers to understand, and he was actually shocked when they didn't. Mm -hmm. Have you ever wondered how many times the Lord Jesus Christ has been shocked with you? With your limited understanding of your of His yeah. Word, after years and years and years of studying, you uh, you know it seems like you still don't get it. That's what He felt here, and He said unto them, "Know ye not this parable?" In other words, you don't get it. You don't understand. You've been with me this long, and you don't understand what I'm saying. Uh, know ye not this parable? And how then will you know? all the parables. So if you don't understand the simplicity of this parable, how are you going to ever understand the difficult ones? The ones that are not quite so practical. You know, it ought to be if we get our nose in the book, we'll understand. You know, the biggest problem we have today is we don't, stand, uh, we don't spend enough time in that book. Now, commentaries are fine, but I've seen people more obsessed with commentaries uh, than they are the Word of God. You know what John Gill was? He was a sinner saved by grace. You know what Charles Spurgeon was? A sinner saved by grace. Nothing more, nothing less. Their words were not inspired. That's the inspired Word of God. 
And this morning, we need to remind ourselves sometime of that and not get so caught up in what other people had to say about the Word of God, but in fact, what the Word of God says. And, and I think we'd be much better off. And so he was shocked that they didn't get it. Verse 14, the sower soweth the Word. Again, very simple. Brother Jared, this is what we need to sow. Commentaries are fine, but remember they're not divinely inspired. We sow this, and that, that, that's what a pastor's job is to do. That's what an evangelist's job is to do. That's what a preacher's job is to do. We sow the Word. <clears throat> now, the difference between us and other things, you leave it there. We, we, we want to make, you know, I don't care what kind of gardener you are, you can't make anything grow. It grows by God. Yeah. And, and, and the same way is the truth of the Word of God. And as he began to explain the parable, he says, listen, the Word is the seed. Verse 15. And these are they by the wayside. The, the seeds that fell on the side of the road uh, that, that didn't land <laughs> that didn't land in the rich ground. These are they <laughs> and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown but when they have heard Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Now, you know, that should make us tremble in a way that Satan can have the ability to grab that up. Now, this is just Larry, and at least when it's my ideas, I'll tell you. It's not, I don't think that can happen to an elect. Uh, he can't steal our word, and when you're ignorant of the scriptures, it's your own fault. But you know what? There's been a lot of lost people that's heard the Word of God over and over and over and over again. And immediately when they hear it, it's snatched away. That's the work of Satan. And he is a master at it. And, and, and so we find as we get into this, he says, this is a possibility. It can happen. Verse 16, and these are likewise which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Now, we've all known the stony ground Christians, and, and they're the ones that, you know, hoop and holler and, and, and so excited about Jesus, but when the hard time comes, they immediately fade in the faith. And usually the hard times run like this. When their children get into something that used to be preached against, and now, well, you know, that's just how it is. Or it's not just woo-hoo all the time. You know, every day is not fun being a Christian. And you know what? We have to be honest in this. We don't always hear from the Holy Ghost every day. And it gets discouraging, it gets hard, and these be the one that have no death. And they're, they're cut off, they're done with, they're, they're through with it, they're through it on it. And uh, that is the, sign, the, the ones that don't last long. Now notice what takes those individuals out. They have no root. Now, if you're well-rooted, you're going to last. If you have no root, it'll be gone before you know it. And have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, <laughs> arising for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Now, again, I want you to see, and so endure but for a while. You know, I would to God that that would never be said about me, that my endurance was short. They endure, they last, they keep going for just a very short time. You know, when a person exercises, one of the results they hope for is to increase their endurance. 
increase the, the longevity, increase how long that they'll be able to withstand. And as we go along in this place, as we continue to serve Christ, that too ought to be our goal. Now, I usually don't do this, but I want you to think about endurance. And here are some meanings of endurance. Undergo. Go through. We're going to have some hard times to go through, and they must be endured. Undergo. Go through. Live through. <laughs> Experience. You think about all the things you've experienced in your life. And you know what? The Lord God authored every one of them. There are some difficult, difficult things you will go through, and the only purpose is to increase your endurance. Increase, because you know what? After that horrible thing happens, something down the road is going to be even worse. Yeah. And we, we, we need that building up as time goes by. You ever thought, why does the Lord God do us that way? It doesn't seem fair. Well, this is the reason He wants us to main, remain pilgrims and strangers. He don't want us to be comfortable That's here. Right. He does not want us to be happy here. Because if we ever arrive at that, listen, Satan's got you where he wanted you. Remember, uh, how did Lot pick his place out? He looked to the well-watered plains, of, and and that that's that was his problem. He was happy here. Remember what it says, and uh, the, uh, the I believe the Godhead went down, but those people went down and literally had to drag him out. That wasn't an invitation gospel, was it? They had to drag them from the city, and Lot's wife still looked back. And, and, and so we find then uh, that the reason behind this, although there are no pleasantries, it's to build us in the faith. Huh. Cope with, deal with, face. Look the problem head on. Handle, suffer. You know, uh, that's not pleasant stuff, is it? But we find in verse 17 that endurance that plays out, endurance that stops, is not the hallmark of a true believer. In fact, here, it's one that the Bible calls here that, that, that they were planted on stony ground, that they had no depth of themselves, they had no, uh, they had no strength of themselves, and this situation were huh, were these folks. Verse 18, a little bit further in the text says, and these are they which are sown among the thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of, the, of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. Now notice, it says a number of things that do this. First of all, the cares of this world. Now, he's going to get into riches and stuff like that in the next problem. So I don't necessarily mean that, believe the cares of this world. It's like, oh, I love the world so much. You know what? In the morning, Lord being my helper, I'll get on my scrubs and I'll head out to Paris because the cares of this world. I've got people I have to take care of, right? If I don't, I disqualify myself as a preacher, right? And so, but they don't need to ever get in the way of the service of the Lord. The cares of this world will pull you away. Ladies, downstairs, you've got a meal prepared in the morning. Before the day even starts good, you got to get up, fix another meal for another day. You know what? That can get you off track, can't it? Everybody homeschools in this building this morning? Sarah, Donna, <laughs> they got to hit that wide open in the morning. The cares of this world, right? Is it a bad thing? No, you're doing, I believe, what the, the scriptures teach you to do. But it can pull you off track. It can consume you. And, and so we find <clears throat> it's not necessarily a bad thing 
But at the end of the day, we have to focus on our service to the Lord. It, it, it will eat up your endurance. So that's the one thing. And the deceitfulness of riches. Now, if we all be honest, we all had as younger, in our younger days, the mind to chase after a fat paycheck. Right? You know why? You know why that's deceitful? Six feet will even this everyone up. Riches do not help you. And I, I, it took me a long time to get to that point. But if I'm in a pine box, or if I'm in a nice coffin, mother's coffin was about, I don't know, I think it's $6,000. We, we'd still be the same distance down, right? And, and so... That's deceitful to think that you that your success is going to be measured in what you have. That's a that that's a lie as hell. It's deceitful. Riches are deceitful. They'll trick you. It's a trick bag. And, and so we find that the uh, the Lord Jesus huh, told us that many 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 years ago that the ones in the thorns are are hindered by all these things around them. And the lust of other things. Women. Automobiles. Many, many things. And the lust of other things. Getting you off track. Choke the word. And it becometh. What's the word? Unfruitful. It didn't say that it went away. It became unfruitful. You ever looked at a redeemed person. And for... 50 years, you see no change in them. That's the reason why. They're still on the milk after 30, 40, 50 years. They're unfruitful Christians. They, they, they have no depth of spirit. So certainly we don't want to be like this, the group of the last two. So how do we build endurance? How do we become the people that are going to last? How are we going to be individuals that have the strength to live in the latter days? You know, if, if you'll read the book of the Revelation, it says, and these things must come to pass in the latter days. And so we, we're going to see a lot, dear friend. Are we going to see the Antichrist? I think we'll know who he is. I don't think we'll see him come, we'll see him come to power, but I think he'll be identifiable. And up into that, I mean, look at what we've got right now. Me and Donna are putting food up, or I guess I said she, she is, like crazy. And you know what? When, when, a, when a little can of beans cost about eight bucks, you're going to know why we did it. Right? And, and so we're going to see some of that transpire. And so what is that going to do? Well, it's going to test your endurance. That's what it's going to do. It's going to test how faithful you can be. And, and so we don't need to be of this group that has no depth of spirit that when the hard times come, we're done. We don't need to be of that group. Now, let's look at some things very quickly that will, that will help you with this. Uh, Paul writing to the church at Corinth, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13 uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we're going to just read a couple of verses there. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 7. And now, uh, this is sometimes uh, referred to, to as the great love chapter. Now, if you, you know, one of the things, uh, the New King James Version, and we don't need a new one, we need the old one, uh, they change this to love. Now, uh, charity goes much deeper in love, does it not? Uh, charity will move you to action. It will make you do things. It, it will make you give of yourself. That's what charity means, is giving of yourself. That's, that's what this will do. And so far beyond just love, this is love in action and causes us to do things. Verse 7, speaking of charity... Beareth all things. 
Your wife ever say something that made you mad? Your husband ever say something that went right through you? You know why you keep going? Because of charity. It beareth all things. Yeah, he's an idiot, but God made him that way, right? And you move on. Charity, huh, uh, verse 7, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. So we find that charity, that this piece of love and action, it causes us to be able to do these things. You know why you believe, and next time somebody wants to throw that easy believism at you, take them to this verse, and you'll find that charity causes you to believe. You believe, you believe with all things. You believe what the scriptures teach. Hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Charity never stops. Uh, charity always endureth. You ever thought about, and, and we talk about it and often, it says charity endureth all things, and we always think about how we love our children or we love our wife. But what the real story of charity is this, how that Christ loved you. Amen. That, that's, that's the story. That, that's the epic of charity is how he loved you. Yeah. And we find, we, we find that here, here. So the first element, if you want to endure, you make your calling and election sure. Because I will guarantee you this. If you're not saved, you're going to fall flat on your face. Charity endureth all things. Now, when we, we begin to think about when it says it endureth all things, uh, that's a huge statement, is it not? Mm -hmm. That means you'll go hungry for the cause of Christ. That, that, mean, that means you'll sell off everything you got to go to the Father's first place in the earth to spread the gospel because charity endureth all things, all the hardships. You ever wonder how missionaries endure some of the stuff they do? It's because of charity. They're right where God wants them to be, and that's sufficient. You know what? I, I dare say that, that I have never been fully to the place that I would give up what I want for what Christ wants. But if I do, His, his love, His it'll cause me to endure. It will cause me to be able to do whatever the Lord God would have me to do. It endureth all things. So the love of the Almighty is based and elemental to those who endure. So if that's true, and it is, we see from the Word of God, what do we think of, what, what, what can we say of people who don't endure? They don't have the love of Christ. They, they don't possess it. And so therefore, when the going gets rough, the rough get going. They don't understand who Christ is. And so we find that if you want to endure in the last day, or if, you, if the Lord's coming a hundred years from now, if you just want to endure till your life is over, then you have to possess charity. Charity never Faileth. You know what? My love can fail. Amen. But right. God, Christ can. That's right. <clears throat> uh, charity never faileth, but whether they be prophecies or preaching, <laughs> they shall fail. Jared, you ever pre uh, uh, preached a message and you left there thinking you felt <clears throat> flat on your face? I know I have. You know what? Because it, fa <laughs> it failed, right? Prophecies, preaching is going to fail at times. <laughs> Whether they be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether they be tongues, <laughs> they shall cease. Whether there be not, whether there be knowledge, it vanish, vanisheth away. Now, knowledge is good, but <laughs> man's knowledge is going to go. That's why I say. Commentaries are fine, but you respect them as such because they will fail. 
they will let you down. And so the first thing we must have is genuine charity as to be able to be successful and to endure for what's coming. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Second Timothy uh, chapter 2 in the first verse. Second Timothy chapter 2 in the first verse, the Bible says, Thou art Thou therefore, Paul writing to young Timothy, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in grace. Now, uh, grace, the Bible says, giveth all things, endureth all things. Grace is given by God, right? So, what are you going to depend on when the doctor walks away and shakes his head? <clears throat> grace, <laughs> right? Uh, you know what's going to give you the ability to look eyeball to eyeball in the face of death? Grace. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so we see here that as Paul is writing to young Timothy, and we find that he had a host of problems out of this church at Ephesus, he says, listen, remember grace. When you can't go on, there'll be grace. When you're ready to quit, there'll be grace. Timothy, you depend on grace, the unmerited favor of God. When nothing is left yet to do, grace will be there for you. Verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. The word of God keeps going. Thou, thou therefore, endure, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, if you underline your Bible, uh, I want you to see, he says, endure hardness. You know what that is? That's a promise that it's coming. Right? If he didn't believe that, Tom, that Timothy was going to have a rough time of it, he wouldn't say, endure hardness. You know what? Life is just hard sometimes. Is it not? Is it not difficult sometimes? I know sometimes, and I think my age is creeping up on me, uh, my check engine lights come on at 50, and uh, you know what? Sometimes it gets a little rough. Sometimes I'm like, I cannot make myself get up one more time, and I don't care if I'm going to Paris or Clarks or wherever to work. Sometimes I just want to say, I am done. You ever thought about that in, Christi in your Christian walk? I'm finished. I can't do this any longer. I've preached for 28 years, and I just can't go any further. You know what will help you then? you got to build your muscle. <laughs> he said, uh, it's coming, endure hardness. Now, you're not going to be able to endure hardness if you're one of those other types of Christians that we read about, and your roots don't go that far down. You're not going to be uh, able to do it. <clears throat> Just by the grace of God, I was... Looking, and I see all the destruction this tornado brought, and, and trees that big around, roots and all just come up. <laughs> you know what? I bet anybody in this room would thought that one would be there forever. But the storm came, did it not? Ripped it up, roots and all. So don't be brag worthy about yourself. And uh, just endure, build up your muscles. Endure uh, as a soldier. That means keeping focus. A soldier knows how to exercise. He knows to prepare. And you know what? They even know their specific job. And they do not get off task. They do their job. And that's how the whole work gets done, right? You, and, and so we find, as the Lord's people that this is some of the best advice that we can take. Get ready for the affliction. It's coming and endure it. <laughs> Stay with it. <laughs> Verse 4. No man that warreth entangling, entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Again, that's going to get you off course. 
that you may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Now, if memory serves me uh, correctly, Brother, Brother Junior didn't join the army. He was chosen. <laughs> the draft card came, right? right. And uh, same way with us. He chose us. And I'll guarantee you, if he chose you, that chose us, you can endure. He, he wouldn't have chose you if you were a failure. He wouldn't have chose you uh, if, uh, <laughs> if, if it wasn't in, in your ability and in, his and in his strength to continue. So, huh, it's coming. Be a warrior. Be aware. Be looking. It's coming. Hebrews, Paul writes, or whomever the writer was, I believe it to be Paul. He writes uh, uh, to the church back at Jerusalem. He had visited there on more than one occasion. He had a little uh, spit with Peter. Uh, and notice what he says, uh, Hebrews 10 and verse 22. Hebrews 10 and verse 22, the Bible says this, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Now, I want you to see that verse 22, he addresses Jewish believers. He addresses people that are redeemed. He, he says, let's go because you've been washed. You, you, you've been made perfect. You've been made complete. You've been made, been made born again. So with that uh, experience with Christ, and if you're going to endure blessed assurance, you better have something real from Christ. Don't you have something that you can't depend on? Have something genuine. Verse 23. Let us hold fast, fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Uh, the profession of your faith. You remember when the Lord saved you? Man. You find him sweet and good still? Do yeah. you want to spend time alone with him? Uh, that's a good measure. That, that, means you, that means you love him. Hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that that has prom that promised, and let us consider one another to provoke <laughs> unto love and good works. You consider each other. Well, man, she really made me angry today. That's not much consideration, is it? We need to consider one another. We need to pray for one another. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another so much more as you see the day approaching. And so, um, and certainly you need to be in the house of God. I think that's sometimes taken out of context. But I want you to see, now drop down to verse 32 with me. But call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of affliction. You remember some battles you've been through? Boy, I have. And you know what? When I think back and see the victory that God brought me through, it's a, it, it's a, a time of rejoicing. Illness, children's illness, struggling with... Uh, <laughs> A mission here at Dover, seeing the church here at Dover kind of flit away. But listen, don't be discouraged. We're now, we're now down to a point we can do some good, faithful work, right? <laughs> and, and, and so he says, <laughs> look at the former days. Ye endured a great fight of afflictions. They came out on top. The Jerusalem church was knocked around partly because of their fault, was probably was partly their fault, and partly because they were just hated. 
You, you remember what you went through? You remember how you stood for Christ? Uh, Peter, you remember the time you said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee uh, in the name of Jesus, arise and walk. You remember that, Peter? Man, what a day of victory that was. And that crippled man got up and said that he went through the town, t temple shouting and running about. That, that was, you remember that? You remember when money came from nowhere? You remember when food came from nowhere? You remember that. Remember the day the Lord saved your soul? That's much better than food and their money. And, and so we find that Paul said, feast on these things. Verse 33, some of the things that happened, partly is, partly while us, you were made a gazing stock, people were staring at you, making fun of you, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly while she became companions of them that were so used. Those, those situations have a purpose. They have a piece of ministry. For ye had compassion of me in my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in, your, in and of yourselves that you have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. You know what? When this is all done, <laughs> your substance there is going to be forever. Endurance will last and last and last and last and last again. <laughs> the house I grew up in <laughs> is gone. You know why it didn't endure? It was carnal. <laughs> it was made by man. And it finally collapsed. The Lord doesn't return. I'm sure someday people will be speeding by to back and forth and said, I remember when there was a double white up there. A preacher man lived up there with his wife. And you know what? Just keep going on by. <laughs> you know why? Because it don't endure. It doesn't last. When we get to glory, it's going to last forever. An endurance that we don't even understand. Last and last and last. That, that, that's the glory that waits for God's people is that never-ending time with Him. James chapter 1. We're almost done. James chapter 1 and verse 12. And James chapter 1 and verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Now temptation is coming. Uh, we often think of it in a carnal sense, a man and a woman, a woman and a man, in, in, in a carnal sense, but you know what? Temptation is far much more than that. Temptation is this, I'd have more money if I didn't tithe. Temptation is this, well, you know what? Uh, uh, forget about it. I've never really believed about dress anyway. That's stupid. I've never believed anything about the pagan holidays. That's dumb. I'm just going to go with it. That temptation will come. And you know what? It's easier than not. <laughs> right? Endure temptation. Listen, dear friend, they're coming, and when they come, identify them as such and, and, and pray to the Almighty that you will not subside to that, you would not give in, but that you would continue for the faith. For when he is tried, this is the joy of temptation. When he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Listen, that's not for everybody. When we're casting crowns before the Almighty, you know what? Not everyone's going to have a crown of life. Who's going to have it? The ones that endured temptation and kept going. When the worst news came, they turned unto Christ. But that's crown of life. That, that's something that you can cast at the feet of Jesus and say, hey, Lord Jesus Christ, it was all for you, and, and you give me the strength to do it, so here it is back. Glory be to God. That's what will happen. That's the reason. Let's place James chapter 5. Uh, James chapter 5 and verse 11. Behold, we count them happy which endure. <laughs> you know what that's talking about? 
people who are dying, people who are almost at the end of the road. We count them happy. Uh, people that die young, not really anticipating their death, not sitting beside the bedside patting their hand, get a horrible call and they've wrapped their car around a tree out into eternity. But you know what? He endured. She endured. She was in church on Sunday. Yeah. Wonderful thing, isn't it? He endured. <laughs> Count them happy. Count them glad. You know, a lot of times we get down in the mucky mucks because we don't we, we forget what ought to make us happy. <laughs> Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord. The Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercies. You've seen the end of the Lord. <laughs> you know what? That day after Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus put him in the, to in the tomb, don't you know they shook their heads and said, it's over. It's done. Now, there was a great time of grief, right? Those three days was empty and, and dark and foreboding. But you know what it says concerning the apostles? They remembered that he said, in three days I'll rise. Emma. He endured his ministry. It was a rough ministry. It was a hard ministry. But look what he brought God. Shouldn't we be like unto Christ? And do endure all things for his name's sake? Listen, church, it's going to happen. Be ready. Be close. When trouble comes, remember Christ. You'll go nothing, you'll go through nothing like he did. I can I can rest assured there. So be faithful.